All right, guys, what is up? We're back. I'm here with Wayne. He doesn't need to introduce himself. You guys will know and love him over time and get the full scoop on everything that he's about. Rapper, singer, producer, lover of Jesus, serves at the church in the music, um, loves all things music and people, serves his community, um, been doing it for a long time. This is Wayne. This is me, Conscience. Now, we are going to be talking about a controversial topic. I'm certain of this because over the years of me being in this space, I've seen people's perspective be so diverse. Oh man, is it okay? Is it not? We shouldn't even be talking about this because all it leads to is division. No, we should be talking about this because we want to glorify God. Man, I've heard it all. We are talking about the cool in CHH. Mm. What do I mean by that? What I mean is it's one thing to be cool. Cool is subjective. However, in a culture, there are kind of these underlying truths that we believe to be true about what things make an artist cool. Might be what they say. Might be what they wear. Might be the phrases they use. It might be how they talk about themselves or the jokes that they say or the events that they go to or what their job is or who their friends are or what's their music sound like or do they have bass in their songs? There's just so much criteria and yet we see um, many people in the musical space jump on trends and ideas and concepts. And what I don't want to imply is, first off, let me just say this. Everybody's trying to be cool. Nobody goes and does the music and says, I don't want this to be good. We want to be excellent and we want people to like it. And there's certainly not a problem with that at all. But we walk a fine line with this subject because unlike secular music in general, um, the lover of Jesus and the worshiper and slave of Christ has new desires that the guy that doesn't love the Lord uh, or doesn't profess to be a Christian, there, there's a value exchange of some sort. Um, certain things get preserved and certain things die. And all things are to bring glory to God. We know that the end of this world will be the magnification of Jesus, um, the subduing of the enemy, um, the saints worshiping God forever, sin no more, and that is the heartbeat behind the believer is we are transformed into a newness of life in Jesus, we have new desires, we want to kill the flesh. Now that person who enters the musical marketplace now has different heart tugs. And so the dilemma becomes, what is the priorities of my art making, both in the subject matter of the music, but even my approach behind the scenes, my thought life, the culture I belong to, the people around me, how do I do all things to the glory of God? And we're not talking about the explicit activities. We know that praying honors God and is something we, we don't have to debate if prayer is ungodly or if prayer is unfruitful. We know it's fruitful. We know it's given to us to do. But what about the non-explicit things like what we talk about in the music, mm. um, the instrument choices, the people groups, the catchphrases, the sweaters we wear, the hats we rock, the things we say, the groups we're a part of, you know, it gets deeper. It turns into a spectrum of thinking when you get into those things. 
And just to summarize here, and I'm going to pass it to Wayne, I think there's a huge temptation in this space right now where being cool in various ways in the culture, both in the music and behind the music, has somewhat become a priority over glorifying God. And not just because we're not explicitly yelling Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the music. It's far more profound than that. There's certain behaviors and things that we do behind the music that indicate maybe we're prioritizing this cool thing like disproportionately in a way where it might indicate that we actually don't give a rip about the kingdom of God at hand. Um, mm. Or might be so disproportionate that it's actually tugging us away and distracting us from doing the music excellently to the glory of God. Yeah. What do you think about when I talk about this topic? Because I feel like people are so quick to kind of, um, no, you don't know what you're talking about, man. Everyone's doing it to the glory of God. There's no way people are being prideful and like self-exalting. You know, it's like, there's like a small group of people, like everybody's prideful, everybody's self-exalting. CHH is dead. And then there's like a big wave of young cats that are like, what are you talking about? We all love Jesus and da, 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 da. Do you see this a lot in the music? Like when you hear music, sometimes you're like, and, and not just one song, I'm talking about like, you hear a catalog from an artist and ever feel like, dang, what is this all really about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say, um, well, uh, so just to backtrack a little bit, I've, I've really like been spare the details of my testimony, like really, really seriously walking with God, I would say to date, probably about just over 10 years, like where, I mean, I've been in the church my whole life, but um, really not like doing the one, when I stopped doing the one foot in, one foot out thing, I would say would probably be about 10 years ago when, it, when mm -hmm. I really started doing that, just to summarize the testimony. And um, for me, I always, I tell my wife this all the time. I'm like, man, I feel like I really like stepped into a relationship with Christ when it was like cool to be a Christian. <laughs> like, I feel like the 2010s, the 20, uh, 2010 to 2020 was like, and I mean, it, not exact dates, but I feel like that was the the it's cool to be a Christian era of like where music like really started to sound like, you know, hip CHH really started to sound like everything else. Um, sure. The level of the production value was high. The the live shows value production value was high. The touring the ability and then also at the same time the ability to be able to um be an independent artist and like really make some decent money and build right. a fan base like a lot of that really took off and 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 they could have always been like that but i just that's when i started paying attention because again that's when i really got interested in all things re related to to christ um so i, I say that to say <laughs> i feel like Maybe some of the things that you that you were mentioning also may have been a byproduct of that, where some people may not even have necessarily intentionally like gone out of their way to like prioritize cool, but because the culture kind of swung that direction, um, the the whole debate about like uh, being a Christian rapper or a rapper that's Christian that was like <laughs> that was like the hot. The hot debate um and some of the, the titles the, the, the no titles yeah, versus the right. titles that thing is still alive and well today i it's, just talked to somebody who I, I won't really mention on camera but yeah a very large figure in chh art making space and even in the secular space mm. and he was still very much like yo man i'm not for these titles and you mm. know i don't think that's like a trend like right. I think everybody hits that feeling many times in their christian walk um, for sure but For it's just, sure. and let me just preface by saying this, guys, we're not talking about this because we plan on arriving at some rubric we can hand out or put in the link in the description afterward. Mm -hmm. I understand that this is such a deep topic. Like, I have not figured this out 
I feel like I've arrived at some helpful guardrails for my own heart, mm. but I also am just deeply con not concerned, interested in how we can think through this and have a heartbeat and a thought life and an art making life that really does this thing to the glory of God. And mm. like, and, and, and know like, what are some healthy things to have in my life and ways to think about this and how I interact socially versus in my regular right. everyday life. And mm -hmm. it's just good to talk about, man, because we all know as believers, we walk through life and there's certain things that we participate in that th the spirit's like tugging on us. Like, is this glorifying you Lord? Mm -hmm. And like, maybe if it isn't like, is this redeemable or how might this look different or how can I have find purpose in this? Do I need to let this go? And that heart tug comes from like many different happenings in the space. And this is one of those happenings that is not old. I mean, mm -hmm. or sorry, it is, it, it's, it's ageless. Mm -hmm. Like everybody deals with this. And, and I don't want to, I'm not a fan of those artists. I got to I got to call him out because I'm not really like shunning him but I I see it a lot. Derek Miner uh depending on the subject matter. Um and we got to call people out who say certain things. It's not like we're throwing them under the bus. It's just I got to give you guys a reference point. Derek Miner oftentimes occasionally will jump on and say something along the lines of Yo, don't consume yourselves with this thing because it's an empty pursuit. It's an empty, empty debate. And I don't want to agree or disagree with him because we would have to take it case by case, subject by subject. And he's somebody who's been in this space for a long time. And so I wouldn't want to kind of discredit him off of one line. We'd really have to unpack that and make some like specific claims that were for or against uh, after much discussion. But I am not a fan of not debating. Mm. I remember being in a U of A as a freshman, I was in a art history class and I watched a 80 year old professor who is dang near on his deathbed, walk up on the stage in front of like 500 kids and say, my greatest fear is that critical thinking as we know it is dying. Mm. And at the time, I didn't even blink. I didn't even, I remembered the line because it was just like, oh, what a line. But yeah, I didn't like think, I didn't really, th I'm like thinking in my mind, like, no, there's just dumb people and smart people, people who choose to think and people who choose to be comfortable. And that's just the way it's always going to be. And people mm -hmm. who have to think critically, it's a harder task. It's harder to think critically than to think comfortably. And so there's always going to be a disproportion there. And there's always going to be a narrow few that critically think, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that what I wasn't thinking about is the amount of distraction increase. There mm. is so much more over the years now screaming at us. Just from the cell phone and the computer alone, we are experiencing astronomical amounts of distractions being thrown our way that we know have nothing to do with the Lord and the kingdom. Yeah. And I mean, and, I think, and, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, um, I mean, I, I didn't actually hear, uh, Derek Miner say, say that. Um, but I, I think the idea, I, I agree with you with, with, um, you know, it is worth having conversations. We shouldn't stop having conversations. I think where equally the balance when it comes to having these conversations is not necessarily to land somewhere, but at least to head to the same place, you know, because I could see, I guess I could see where, I don't know his, the context, but if the context is there's no point in having these conversations because they don't go anywhere, then I could agree with that. You know, um, but if we're having the conversation to actually like land somewhere, which I feel like where we're going is balance just across the board, you know, like 
um, hey, I see that you're trying to be cool or we, we need to have the cool to be relatable so we can reach, you know, reach people with the gospel. Um, okay, but hey, let's also reel it in and actually like put some put some gospel in it, <laughs> like, I, like actually put the message in it. Um, it's really, yeah, really the balance and whatever it takes to, to have that, whether it be like, hey, maybe we should hold off on some of these conversations because they're not fruitful or hey, we need to have these conversations because not having them is not fruitful. <laughs> it's, well, uh, it's necessary. Yeah. And, and, and I want to just make one thing clear because we haven't even unpacked the cool prioritizing the cool over the calling yet. Yeah. We haven't even dove in and we're already at 15 minutes. So yeah. we're going to close <laughs> shortly. But I, cool. I think this is important because a lot of times it's about making a foundation to which we put purpose to why we're even discussing these things. Yeah. And, and one thing I want to make clear is this. There is a time to walk away from a discussion. Absolutely. Mm. Always be discerning. Is this worth my time? Is this for a purpose? Do I share the same goal in why I'm talking about this with this person? Um, what is the purpose of the circumstance? Uh, circumstance. So I'm not writing off Derek Miner in any case. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is when I listen to OGs, there seems to be this collective conscious of the desire to not piddle paddle with a lot of these discussions because they think they've already been either solved or it's mm -hmm. like, you guys will think this, we'll think this, and let's just let it be what it be. And mm -hmm. my thing is, no, 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 no. Let's just be, because here's the key. We need to learn to communicate better. And we don't learn to communicate better until we learn to communicate with somebody we don't agree with. Yeah, that's true. Or somebody who we agree with, but has a different perspective because mm. we're challenged to listen and process a worldview or a perspective that isn't in our own head. And so active listening becomes critical, but there's a heart component of it as well. Brother, mm -hmm. sister, I love you. I won't enforce myself upon you. I'm not trying to win. We're... We need to be equipped to have speech and debate. Communication and critical thinking are some of the most timeless, valueless, uh, not valueless, but invaluable skills you could ever have in this society. Knowing how to be a great communicator and a great thinker is mm. way at the top of the necessary skills that will dictate your success. Um, in every area of your life. So if you have a habit of life that encourages you to not be in discussions, uh, and, and here's the difference. Don't be fooled by the fact that if you got 10 guys around you and you all kind of think the same and talk the same, you don't act, don't expect the growth to be astronomical. There's no challenge. There's no tension. There's no yeah. stepping outside of yourself. You just cloned yourself. That's that's a that's not balance. That's not the those aren't the ingredients that build well-roundedness or diversity or understanding. They can, but it just might not be in the way that you think it is. Um and so again, my heartbeat is like bro, I think We've let the toxicity of the internet, like a, in a way of the devil sort of way, make everybody so uncomfortable that we have ran from critical thinking and speaking to people with differing opinions in a loving way to the point where none of us are equipped and we're not equipped because we don't do this. And the only way to really get equipped is to have the discussion and to bump our heads and to learn to love our neighbor and our brother and to do this. Like there's no learning apart from the mistakes and failures of the exchange. It's like riding a bike. And I feel like a, the heartbeat of a lot of these OGs is don't even get on the bike. It's not worth your time. And it's like, well, it isn't worth your time if you don't have the tools. 
like anything in life. But if you have the tools and you've got the heart and you've got the spirit of the Lord working with you, it's a, it's, it's an essential pursuit. And we just simply need to see more people doing it well to encourage us that this type of thing is certainly, um, valuable. And it's almost, I almost equate it to like good music. I used to grow up in the underground scene and it was always like, man, we don't listen to the radio. It's trash. The good music's yeah. on Napster and <clears throat> LimeWire and the underground forums. And it's like, okay, well, let's just say this. Finding a lot of great music that you personally love takes a lot of rock turning. You got to go out into the world. You got to go to the record stores. You got to find all this stuff. You got to really, if you feel like there's a scarcity of something you desire, then it's just going to take more hard work to find it. And you got to fight for it and you find it. And when you find it, you hold it up to everybody else and say, hey, look what I found. It's out there. There is mm. great, great this or great that. And no, I feel like it's the same way with speech and debate in the CHH space and just believers on believers is it's like, the internet has given us this essence of toxic energy. And it's like, don't talk with other Christians about critical things because all it leads to is division and hate and all this stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like, I really wonder if that's how it plays out locally. Like on a local level, I feel like there's a lot of great people think, you know, because the internet makes you do goofy things. It makes you mm -hmm. skip steps in the relationship and compromise the relationship. And there's a lot more temptations on the internet because you're excused of a lot of accountability. And so it's almost just set up to fail. But it's like, there's a lot of people that we probably aren't hearing from because they're not people that like social media who are actually getting the job done and growing with their neighbor and, and building up their fellowship and equipping everybody. And they're just getting swole on this like spiritual maturity that is loving and is of the character of God. And more people could benefit from it if they just heard these people talk and love the way that they love and talk the way that they talk and just equip everybody to do this thing well and the sooner we do that the better this whole thing is going to be not just the music but life and so i'm always a fan of okay maybe this isn't appropriate to talk about online because you guys are like skipping a bunch of steps and you're you're kind of doing it wrong maybe step back but don't step back from it all together. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a matter of getting equipped and finding somebody that values you, values you as a human being and you guys can have that beautiful exchange and when the uncomfortability and the vulnerability comes, it's being held and, and, and nurtured by two people that genuinely care about each other and mm -hmm. so it's the breeding grounds for beautiful relationship and maturity. And that's the thing I'm fighting for. And so most of the time I'm like, no, go do it. Um, but yeah, there's absolutely a place for caution, but I just hate the extreme of taking it to, this isn't worth your time. Like we need some context there. Like this isn't, I, I wish they would just take it a step further and not make it a tweet. This is not worth your time because this, this, and this, and I'm not completely writing it off. It's just this, the way it's being done now is not appropriate. Um, yeah. But before I sign off, Wayne, mm -hmm. do you want to wrap up any thoughts that you have on this subject? And uh, we'll have to hit them with a part two in the future. Cool. Yeah. No, I was just going to bring it back full circle. The reason I brought up, um, you know, that it being cool to be a Christian um, this past decade is that that what, what you're what you're kind of talking about and 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 uh and challenging is has been the default you know like it's not worth having these conversations it's not you know we need to lead uh in this way we need to do it that way and it's kind of like that that was the challenge i feel at the beginning of the 2010s um you know get out of our tradition we need to do it differently now and I feel like that's uh, th what you're talking about is now actually become the tradition. <laughs> it's, uh, well, and, and it's I understand the, the sentiment a yeah. lot of times because a lot of these guys have tried to have the discussions. Yeah. 
They've tried to critically think. They've tried to share their heartbeat, and they've been met with such resistance. Yeah. But they kind of picked up their bags and went home, mm -hmm. and they don't go outside anymore because they're like, this just totally isn't worth my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, it's totally worth your time. You just need to go outside and find some other people. Mm -hmm. Someone is out there willing to listen to you and actually loves you and isn't going to wave the gavel at you. And when you find that person sparks are going to fly and you guys are going to create this breeding ground of love and critical thinking to the point where now you're going to love to critically think you're going to love to dig deep because you're doing it with somebody who cares about you and you're doing it biblically and and and, and it's just going to do so much good for your life for your well-being for your mental health for fellowship itself um think about this in fellowship we're, so, we're supposed to hold each other accountable. Let's let's throw music out the window. Let's talk sin. If your brother sins over and over and over and over and over and over, are you supposed to just go like this? No. Yeah. So if you can't even have critical conversation about music, you definitely ain't got homies in your life where you're like calling them out if if it's getting real or you feel like they're out of pocket or in there or they're in the wrong because you're gonna be like, oh, I can't bring that up because we're gonna divide. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it, it's it, it can it can get dangerous because if we just have this mindset of being non-confrontational, then I think we've completely overlooked so many crucial areas in scripture where people were called out for things in a loving truth filled way. And even in a way that might seemingly feel unloving uh, for the sake of the gospel. And we, we better not be out here implying that confrontation is never necessary. Public. I, I think, I think the key is public because we know we, we don't actually know, you know, what's happening like in, in the actual local settings, but yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, co context place. is absolutely important. Yeah. You know, and again, if we're talking about music, then I think it's public domain. Yeah. You know, for if sure. we're talking about like, like, spiritual, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's, yeah, we're, that's local I, I brought up the that, example yeah. only to say, like, if you're uncomfortable of the division right. and implications of what's going thing. on talking about a song, right. yeah. Okay. I don't even know how you deal with this category over here, yeah. which we're actually called to do. Um, yeah. And so it's like, it's like, man, the sensitivity level of not just believers, but human beings in general today in our society is like, wow, like if you're afraid of this level of confrontation, there's probably no depth going on in your life. Like, how are you getting challenged? Yeah. Like that's the basis of growth is like, tension and challenge being cultivated and nurtured and transformed and tested with like good ingredients. And just mm -hmm. because you, you, you know, we got to reestablish like, okay, when that's happening, it's almost like this. When I'm working out and I create atrophy in my bicep, I would certainly benefit from knowing, okay, how do I repair my arm? What should I do once the atrophy's there? So I don't actually tear the bicep but we know for a muscle to grow, the fibers have to rip, mm -hmm. right? So it would benefit me to know, okay, as soon as that atrophy happens in that bicep, okay, what do I need to do now that it's at the, its highest moment of tension and soreness? What do I need to nurture that with so that it comes back and actually grows rather than calluses over and becomes unusable? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so now it actually benefits me to know, okay, when I'm debating with somebody, when I'm discussing something, what are the ingredients I need to have with that person so that this is valuable and this is a good thing rather than a, a bad thing or a dividing thing or, or if it is dividing, a necessary divide maybe because we can't act like there's never a point where lines need to be drawn either. But just mm -hmm. to make sure that it's a fruitful experience that's yeah. considerate of both parties. Yeah. And I think that's essential. Yep. All this right, man. Different. Yeah, dude, uh, this is huge. And again, we're, we're only going to scratch the surface. And I know we're going to cover a lot of this. We're only still going to scratch the surface. But I hope in these conversations, um, hopefully in your guys' experience as you like meditate on this and think through this 
we're not, we're not trying to like overwhelm you. We're just speaking out loud because I know that believers mm-hmm. think about this stuff. And we're in a time where it's like, I guarantee you, if you started talking like how me and Wayne just talked like on Twitter or on Instagram, everyone would be like, yo, you would get no likes, no reshares, no com- you you might get one or two comments from the guy who's just as nerdy as you because he wants to go in on where you are wrong and that's going to be the end of it like they're just going to be waiting for you to post some music <laughs> because this is the type of stuff that gets deep and so we're just going to get deep for you our the video that i post i know we're not going to get a lot of traction on it it's not going to get no views cuz people are going to be like yo this is too much but for the few people that this video speaks to and maybe in the future this will build a framework for other believers that are going to take the baton from us and go do this thing even better further farther um we want to place this here to be something that helps you have a heart and a, a heart for god Um, a heart for people, um, a desire to do it well, um, and also to motivate you to pursue this narrow path of figuring this thing out. And it's not for figuring it out's sake. It's how can we do it better? Um, How can we love better? How can we speak better? How can we do the art better? This is one of those categories where if you run from it for too long, you will become you won't be salt and light. You'll just be this flat soda of a believer who doesn't have an opinion on this and doesn't do anything interesting in, in your lifetime You you because you can't confront anybody. You can't even confront yourself. And uh, we don't want you to be Luke, lukewarm um, with this area of your life. And I hope this benefits people who don't even make music because this is a dilemma that people have in the church How should the church really be ran? How should fellowship really be done? Um, So, yeah, hope it blesses you guys. Wayne, sign us off. Yes, sir. That is another one. It's another uh, episode with um, Wayne Classic and Your Guy Conscience. Good night.